Hello and welcome back to Dirty City News. Now, if this is your first time tuning in, welcome. And if you're subscribed to the channel, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. If you're not, hit that subscribe button. Now, on this episode, we have an acquaintance of T.D. Jake. She's a family acquaintance in the church and outside of the church. And she's making some allegations, some strong allegations against T.D. Jake. And, uh, man, this is, you heard it first here. Um... But if you want to hear the entire podcast, go to MVMO Podcast. Uh, it's a really good story. Um, and I just want you guys to be the first to hear it here on Dirty City News. Uh, again, uh, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button and all notification bells. But without further ado, uh, here she is. Anything I share here, I'm not worried about being sued. And just to be sure that anyone listening understands that, I will be giving the first initial of names, okay? There are people talking who are just sharing rumors, but um, not all of us are sharing rumors, okay? I had a mentor um, from 1999 to 2000. She was my mentor. Mr. R, okay, his first name started with an R. So Mr. R used to be a boarder in her home. Now, my mentor told me Mr. R is gay and his wife knows he's gay. Uh, Mr. R was a part of the ministerial staff. He became a minister and he was very close to T.D. Jakes. Okay. And um, she said he told her that, you know, he was going to share some things with her that she could never tell anybody. And so um, later on, she tells me uh, and a few other people that he did come. They had set up a time and day for him to come to her house. He came and he talked with her for several hours, just divulging stuff behind the scenes ministry stuff. And she told us some things I can never tell y'all, but what he did tell her was that T.D. Jakes was gay and that T.D. Jakes had had a relationship with a man. Now, I will stop and say, whether that man was Mr. R, I, I don't know because she never told us that. But then she told us there are things I can never say. I can never tell because I swore, you know, that I wouldn't tell, you know, some of the stuff that he told me. I'll tell you, as soon as they got through talking, she got she left that church. My mentor did. And it devastated her. Not too long after the things that Mr. R shared with her and swore her to secrecy to, she had a stroke. I always believed and I still believe it now that it was the stuff he told her that contributed to her having that stroke because the timeline was just too close. The Jakes have five children. Boys, both their names start with an, a J. One is light skin, one is dark skin. It is true that the two under, older sons are gay. The two older sons are not his biologically. They're not the sons of Jakes. Now, the sons, one is darker skin. The darker skin son is the one who was caught in Keith's Park many years ago. Now, those two sons they are not the biological children of T of Thomas. Okay. When before Sarita was a teen mom. Okay. She had both of the boys when she was uh, a young woman. And, um, sometime later, I don't know if it was years. I don't know the time frame of between her having and her meeting Thomas, that part of their story. I don't know. But one of the great things that made her fall in love with Thomas was that he accepted her two boys. And yes, he did later adopt them. So, He's the man that raised them because I don't know anything about their biological father. Y'all, I don't know who he is. That's the part I can't say. My mentor told me, and I'll never forget this. There was a time when the Jakes lived near what is not White Rock Lake in Dallas. Okay. They had a home. They used to have a home over there. And she told me her friend was part of this group of people that had gone to the house. But I don't know how many sessions they had, but this was a time as I said earlier, where people kind of saw homosexuality differently, especially in the church. And so they believed that it was an evil spirit and it could be cast out. And so she was telling me that the friend had said that they had had a few sessions at the Jake's home where they were trying to cast the devil out of these two boys. And she, I remember, I'll never forget. She said to me, she said, and, and they said every time they would get to a point where they thought they were going to cast him out, Jake's would leave the room. Why? I don't know what he was leaving room for. I don't know. When all this stuff comes out over the next days and weeks about Thomas, you know, T.D. Jakes, which stands for Thomas Dexter, for those who may not know, I don't want to assume everyone knows what that stands for. Um, I want all of you to understand that Sarita was a part of the cover up. 
So very often when things come out about these husbands, the wives, nobody really, the wives get to play innocent. People assume they're innocent, kind of like the Vanessa Long, Eddie Long situation. People assume they're innocent. Uh, the wife kind of skates off and people look at her like, oh, but that's never the case. It's never the case when women like Sarita go along, participate in when I say participate in, I don't mean necessarily the act. I just mean uh, go along with the cover up and pretending that it's not what it is. That that's what gets this. What That's what makes these things go on for years and years and years, because as women, we have power. And when we leave a man. People know something's up. What I'm saying is when it all comes out, I don't want anyone to be like, oh, poor Sarita. No, it's not going to be poor Sarita. Sarita, people have gotten information back to Sarita for years about her husband. But there came a time when certain things were get, getting back to her. And then he was, he took over her email. Um, I mean, listen, Thomas buys Sarita's clothes. He's always bought her clothes. And so you got to understand the kind of state Sarita was in when she met Thomas. What would she have done if she left him? She didn't have nothing. She had nothing. She came from nothing. She was a, a coal miner's daughter. When I say she came from nothing, I don't mean she as a person isn't valuable. What I'm saying is she didn't come from prestige or money or anything like that. She was a poor girl who had come from upside a mountain in West Virginia. <clears throat> and it was because of him that, you know, she is and has all that she does. So I don't know. I'm not trying to get into her mind and understand why she stayed, why she was okay with him having these extramarital relationships. I don't know. All I know is she, she, I'm not even sure if she would have ever had anything had it not been for him. And so maybe she felt some sort of devotion to him for, because of that. I don't know. And he did take her two sons that she had out of had out of wedlock. Again, not a shaming statement. I'm just saying that because that's the phrase we used to use. And he raised them. I won't be shocked by anything that comes out, but I do know a lot of people are. And I just I just hope that they don't put it in the lap of God. You know, God doesn't have anything to do with these folks messes and schemes and and sleeping around and whoremongering. He has nothing to do with it. You have to understand it wasn't God allowing. It was us allowing. These rumors have been out for years. How come the church never held him accountable? Maybe he would have sat down years ago. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and check out this next video.